Oh, thank you. Now it's time. So let's start today's uh, KSF PH seminar. Today's speaker is Dr. Gong Jun Choi from CERN. He will talk about this interesting topic, different perspective to axion quality problem. Please start when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much for the um, invitation to the um, KSF seminar. Um, so today um, I want to make discussion with you about the um, um, the different perspectives to the action quality problem. Um, this talk will be based on the um, papers um, in collaboration with the Staminagida and the Cliff Burgess, um, Fernando Cavetto, and um, Jacob Leedham. Okay, and this paper is the the paper that we're almost um, finishing, and and we hope to submit this paper very soon. Um, so, I will first define the um, what is axion quality problem? Um, and then um, as, as promised from the title, um, um, I will present um, two different ways of understanding axion quality problem in different pictures. Um, for that purpose, um, first um, I, will, I will try to discuss, so I will discuss basically how we can understand this problem in first very well known, um, the usual patch print picture, okay, which is, um, basically, the implemented by the global U1 patch print symmetry with the patch print scalar. And as an, and as an example to resolve this issue in, in patch print picture, um, I will present a UV compilation of high quality QCD, uh, the QCD axiom in, in KSFZ model. Um, and then I will um, move to very different perspective to understand the QCD axiom quality problem and axiom solution to a strong speed problem. Um, based on the so-called the Dior formulation, okay, which was proposed a long time ago by um, Gia Diwali. Um, and there you will see, um, basically, we don't have the Petrochrin symmetry, but the um, axionic shift symmetry arises as a consequence of the two-form axionic gauged shift symmetry. Okay, and there um, the implication might be, um, implication of the high quality QCD axion may, uh, may be the multiple axion scenario. Um, so, what what is basically what is QCD axion quality problem? Um, in 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 normal scenario of patch queen, um picture, if you have the um, axion potential that is generated by the QCD instanton whose size is inverse of lambda QCD, and then normally um it like it's well very well known that the um, axion potential has potential minimum at the um, origin of the field space. Okay, in this case, there's no doubt about. Um, if the axion can be a good solution to a strong speed problem, okay. But now let's try to think about the case where um, due to some reason, um, we have some correction to the um, axion potential, okay. And let's say that is delta V, okay. And let's say here the blue line um, represent the, the normal, um, the QCD axion potential generated by the instanton um, with the size of lambda QCD inverse, inverse of lambda QCD. And let's and, and at the moment let's try to remain agnostic about the um about the source of potential source of the um the correction to this axiom potential here. Okay. But, but let's say there is some correction to, to axiom potential, okay, which is now given by this yellow line here. Okay. Um, but in the case where this correction is in, in phase with the um the axiom potential blue line, and then then the net potential, um, which is plotted here with a green line has potential minimum at, again, the origin of the field space. So in this case, um, axion is again, very good solution to a strong, very good solution to the, to the um, strong speed problem. But if this correction now, um, if, the, if this correction is out of phase by having um, a bit different arguments of this cosine function here, okay, let's say that the argument of cosine function is given by theta minus 0.1. For example, okay. Then the the QCD axiom potential, um, the which is represented by um, the red line here, and the correction blue line, which is out of phase of the um, the red line here, will eventually give rise to the net potential, um, which is the purple line, which importantly experiences the shift of the potential minimum um by the amount of this ratio of the correction to the potential to the potential height here, okay? And if this ratio um, um, 
which is made basically the shift of the um, potential minimum, if that is greater than 10 to the neg negative 10th power, and then um, there's no more meaning in axionic solution to a strong speed problem because axion no longer experience explains the null observation of the um, neutron vector jackal moment so far. Okay. So then the question is what could be, so then, then here we realize um, if there is this kind of a correction, and then um, this is very fatal um, damage to the axion solution. So therefore, um, somehow, um, in order to maintain the, um, the nice quality of a QCD axion solution to a strong speed problem, there must be a way to suppress um, these potential corrections to the potential. Then in order to um, propose some solution to this, the quality issue of the axion um, axion, so, so in order to address, propose some um, resolution to this quality issue of the QCD axion, um, we have to know what could be potential source of this correction to the axion potential, okay? There can be several, okay? But, but let me give you just, just give you, just to give you the taste of this correction. Um, let me just present two examples of that. Um, first of all, um, if you have more, if you have more quarks, um, for the QCD, then we know, then that is known in, in, in low energy QCD, then they will make correction to the QCD beta function so that um, it can be possible, it's, it's, it's still possible in high energy, um, the QCD will lose asymptotic freedom. The gauge coupling rises again um, as you move to higher energy um, regime, okay? In that case, probably the instanton, whose size is smaller than the inverse of lambda QCD, um, they may, um, make the non-negligible non contribution to axion potential, okay? And, and also the, the instanton now, QCD instanton will gonna emit not only zero mode of the QCD quarks, the non-quarks in some mode, but also the, the other, um, other um, colored fermion zero mode will be emitted from the instanton. Then in order to uh, make estimate for the, um, for the instanton, so the smaller size instanton contribution to axion potential, we have to somehow and close those fermion zero mode, okay, emitted from the QCD instanton. For example, um, you can use, for example, the, the gauge invariant four fermion um, operator, um, whose coefficient is given by lambda here. And in general, this, the important point here is um, the, those operators will be, will be accompanied by the complex coefficient, okay, dimensionless um, complex coefficient. Because of, because of that reason, the correction to axiom potential generated by the, um, this kind of instanton um, will be eventually out of phase of the, um, our um, normal, the QCD axion cosine potential. So this can be one um, potential source of this kind of very dangerous correction to the axion potential. Um, more importantly, um, there's another source which, um, which relies on, which is um, attributable to the, the global nature of the Petrukin symmetry, okay? Because the global, because the Petrukin symmetry, um, that is global symmetry, that means the non-renormalizable operators, in principle, they don't need to respect the Petrukin symmetry, okay? And then in Petrukin picture, we have a, the, the Petrukin scalar, complex scalar phi, okay? And then you can think about this kind of the higher dimensional operator, okay? Made up of the Petrukin scalar. Um, and this non-renormalizable operator, they can be readily in the, in the Lagrangian because the U1 Petrukin is global symmetry, okay? And the important point here is even if you begin with in UV theory, um, even if you begin with a CP invariant theory, okay, that doesn't mean the question here is real. That's because um, even if you, you, you impose a CP invariance, um, C will at least encode the um, phase of the Fermion mass matrix in QCD. So therefore the C here is in general complex, okay? What it means is, um, when this non-renormalizable operator um, will produce the cosine potential by being, by being added by the, its, its Hermitian conjugate, um, again, the, the produced axion potential correction will become out of phase of the normal QCD axion cosine potential. So this can be another source of this dangerous correction to the QCD axion potential, causing the axion quality issue. So, Um, so this is um, this is how we could understand the um, quality issue in Petrukin picture, okay? 
then the then then the um then then given this kind of potential sources for the um axiom quality problem, the question is now how to how we could basically suppress this correction to the axiom potential sufficiently such that this ratio uh, remains still smaller than the 10 to the negative 10th power. Okay, that is basically the how we define the Q, uh, QCD axiom quality problem, and and that that um, that gives us um this kind of discussion gives us gives us the um the sense for how we could address, how we could resolve this quality problem. That's nothing but just, just find a way to suppress this correction to the axiom potential, okay? But, but normally um, this kind of situation requires um, more, like more and more ingredients in high energy, okay? So in this talk, I will focus on um, suppressing this kind of higher dim dimension operator here, okay? Based on the symmetries um, that we're very much familiar with. Okay, so as promised, um, as a and and there so so then then given 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 that problem and given that strategy to 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 handle the problem, there there has been a lot of literatures proposing many different ways of um suppressing this kind of operator here. You can rely on discrete symmetry. You can rely on many many exotic symmetries. You can think about some some hidden strong dynamics, um, such that you can explain the axion as a composite, or you can think about heavy axion. There are many many solutions. Okay, and 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 just. Just to give you the sense for a solution to the quality issue in patch computer, um, let me today present a, a a resolution to that issue, okay? Which will eventually give us the um, a sort of UV completion of the KSVZ axiom in supersymmetry model. Um, so far, do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have any question, then let me move on to um, the discussion for. The, um, the the first perspective to the to the problem based on the Petrkin picture. Um, so in this um, perspective, let me ask two basically two questions. The first question is what's the origin of the global Petrkin symmetry? Okay. So global Petrkin symmetry, this this is basically the accidental anomalous symmetry, but it's very strange in in in, in quantum field theory uh, quantum field theory sense because um like. It is called symmetry, but it's not at all symmetry. Okay, at quantum level, it's broken down. It has a normal. It, it is anomalous um, with respect to the SU three color. So and also it's accidental. Okay, so there's no reason why we. Well, there's no reason. There's no any um, reasonable reason why any UV theory can actually um, give rise to this kind of accidental symmetry. So we can ask um, the what would be the the, po the potential origin of this global your Petrkin symmetry. Another question um, I want to ask here is how we could basically protect axion potential um, from the Petrkin violating operators. Okay, so as I told you, um, I just um, in in previous slides I give you the the I give you um, as an example to the correction um, to the potential. I just give you um, the example of the dimension five operator, but of course in principle you can have a dimension five, six, and so on. Hard all the higher dimensional higher higher dimensional operators because all of them are in principle. Um, can, can give rise to the violation of the global Petrkin symmetry. So in principle, there's no way, um, there's no reason why the Lagrangian does not have all this kind of operators, infinite number of operators, okay? Then this is very dangerous because they will they will gonna um, make the axiom solution in strong speed problem meaningless. So I wanna ask here on um, this question, how we could basically suppress all this um, axiom potential, okay? If not all of them, then, then how we could um, guarantee a sufficient amount of suppression, okay? Required amount of sufficient, required sufficient amount of suppression. Then um, to me, the interesting possibility would be in model building perspective, the interesting possibility would be, um, um, would, be, would be the case where I can address these questions simultaneously um, with the aid of other well motivated BSM physics, okay? Um, in other words, let's say you have some other symmetries, particle contents that are very much, very much well motivated um, in, in BSM landscape, um, not due to strong speed problem, but due to other issues like baron symmetry, neutrino mass, or Higgs hierarchy problem, and so on. Okay. Let's say there are some already proposed, very familiar, well-known symmetries, okay, the particle contents, let's say. And then if somehow these two problems can be addressed, okay, simultaneously um, by the use of already well-known um, symmetries in BSM landscape. And then that would be great because the problem and the problem in X and physics now become um, the consequence of other BSM physics so that the axion 
can be can achieve the great harmony with the the whole of the BSM landscape if this is possible. So I want to ask um, this question here. Then um, I will give very special attention to the U1 B minus L symmetry and the um, supersymmetry, especially the R symmetry. Okay, um, which super which supersymmetry is always accompanied by. Um, do you have any questions so far? Okay, if not, then um, as I told you, the strategy is using these two symmetries. Um, can we answer these two questions? Okay, that, that that's basically the um, that's basically what I want to discuss in this first part of the talk. Okay, so then, um, um, uh, Gong -jun, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, yes, Could you Professor go back Paul, one yeah. slide? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when you consider the, the BSM physics, do you also include physics from the gravitations, gravitational um, corrections? Um, gravitational correction to, to what, sorry? So for instance, you are considering global symmetry. Yeah. And as you know, the quantum gravity effect will break the global symmetry anyway. That's right. So, so when you consider this well-motivated BSM physics, will you also consider uh, the possibility of breaking the global symmetry due to quantum gravity? Yeah. So, so when I try to find a resolution to these problems, um, I will not consider the the some some well-motivated physics in gravity sector, but um, the gravity sector will actually, as a matter of fact, as you know very well, gravity sector. Will gonna give you precisely this kind of potential. This 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 kind of the um the operators, Patrick mm -hmm. Marilini operators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like as you know, very well, you're expert in this. The one like presence of one solution mm -hmm. uh, may uh, imply the, the the global symmetry on violation. Yeah, right. Which give rise to um the generation of this potential. This this That's kind right. of uh, operators. Yeah. So okay. so that so the the, the gravity sector may serve. So so in this in this um in this picture, the gravity sec gravity sector will will motivate us. By giving the um, problem here, okay, the, the quality problem, okay, but, okay. but I will not find the resolution in the gravity sector. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. my resolution will be based on this very very easy, like not easy, but like very familiar symmetries here. You want the amount of cell with free right hand chain, you can gauge it. It's very mm -hmm. familiar, and also mm -hmm. R symmetry. Super symmetry will motivate it. So okay, mm -hmm. there's always R symmetry. Mm -hmm. So will you yeah. gauge all this U one B minus L and R symmetry? Yeah, very good. That's what I want to do. Here. Okay, that's good. right. Yeah, thank you. Go on. Yep. Yep. Okay, so let's try to think about the case where you have, you're given just two U1 global symmetry, okay? And, and let's say um, it's not necessary, but let's say there are those two U1s are some, somewhat due to somewhat, um, like somehow they're um, anomalous um, with respect to the SU3 color, let's say, okay? And then um, that means their corresponding currents, di like divergence of those currents, um, should satisfy this anomaly um, equation here, okay? Where the G mu nu is a field strength of the um, the SU3 color. But then this means, um, this means you can always find the the linear combination of, of this J1 and J2, um, which is anomaly free, okay? For example, here, um, let's say the minus Q2 over Q1 times J1 plus J2, um, you can see that that's anomaly free. So it's always possible if you're given basically two U1s, okay? anomalous U1s, and then you can always find a linear combination, which is anomaly free. However, um, even like even so, one of them is still, so one of them, when, the, when one of them is gauged, um, the other linear combination always remain anomalous at quantum level, it's still anomalous. So this is always what happens, okay? This is what happens always when you're given basically two U1s, okay? Um, and then um, probably I'm assuming this kind of setup, we can now identify, given given the fact that we can readily gauge, you can we can easily gauge U one B minus L, okay, which is not at all, by the way, trivial. But U one B minus L is known to be able to be perfectly gauged, okay, with the aid of the um, presence of three right handed chain, okay. So why not then we can why not then um, identify the anomaly free um, U one with the U one B minus L, okay, and the the anomalous one with a U one Patrick queen, okay. So then 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 the the idea is you you're you're given with the um, you're given basically two U1s, and then you can you can always have one gauge the U1, that is U1 B minus L, and the other one, anomal, always anomalous one, that is U1 Petri Queen, okay? Um, these two U1s, by the way, they will be eventually, um, as we go to the low energy, 
they will um, go through the spontaneous symmetry breaking. Therefore, you need a two scalars, okay? Two, you want two scalars. So, so let's call, so let me introduce two scalars, phi and phi prime, okay? Then, then, then in this, um, because I define um, the, each of the current um, by taking the linear combination of the two current, okay? Um, both of the scalars now become, um, they become bi-charged. So that means phi, uh, phi carries the B minus L charge and the Petrkin charge. Phi prime also carries B minus L charge, Petrkin charge. And let's say at the moment the phi carries the B minus L charge P and the phi prime, phi prime carries B minus L charge minus Q. So by the way, when I, when I so in this, in this setup of two U1, um, two, two complex scalar, um, where is axion basically? Um, you can, so you can, so to, to, see, to, to see where you can find axion, um, you can look at the kinetic term for the two scalars here, okay? And let's say the A tiller, P tiller, they are phase component of the, this phi, phi, phi and phi prime here. Then after spontaneous symmetry breaking happens for these, for these two U1s, um, you can just write down, you can just rewrite this kinetic term in this way, okay? And then um, you know that um, this combination, this expression somehow eventually should give rise to the um, kinetic term for the, for the, um, the, the axion and the, um, the mass term for the, um, the gauge flows and longitudinal mode here. Okay. Um, and then by identifying these two expressions here, um, you come to know that the, this expression here, which is coupled to A mu, should be identified with the longitudinal mode of the U1B minus L gauge boson. And then um, the other orthogonal um, direction, orthogonal combination um, of the A tilde, B tilde will give you expression for the A, okay, up to some normalization, con normalization factor. So that you can now have the expression for the axion and the longitudinal mode of the U1 B minus L gauge boson in this way, in terms of the A tilde and B tilde. Um, so as I told you, um, let me let me assume the 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 the, um, the first scalar phi carries B minus L charge P, and phi prime carries B minus L charge minus Q. But then now what that means is, um, previously when you only have when you have only single scalar Petrkin scalar, um, you you have all those um, the all those Petrkin violating operators here, okay. But now, because this guy um, become bi-charged, okay? Um, only those combination of scalar operators um, respecting the U1 B minus L will, can, can be in the Lagrange now, okay? So even if some operator violate the Petrkin, Petrkin symmetry, um, that doesn't mean it can be there. Why? Because that operator may not respect U1 B minus L. So the only, the only remaining um, scalar operators here, um, the only remaining higher dimensional operator, um, they are those which respect to U1 B minus L. So all the other operators are just suppressed because they don't respect U1 B minus L. Why do they need to respect U1 B minus L? Because that's gauge symmetry here, okay? So in this way, um, when you, in this two U1 picture, um, you can see that um, this setup greatly reduces number of patch violin operators, okay? So now you only need to focus on um, this type of operator um, where, um, so this type of operator um, where the um, U1 bare number B minus L charge is zero, okay? I told you the phi carries P, um, phi prime carries the minus Q. So therefore this combination um, respect to U1 B minus L. And only powers of this expression can be in, in super potential, in super spectrum model, okay? Um, as a higher dimension operator. You only need to um, focus on this kind of operators, okay? As a dangerous um, dangerous operators um, contributing, um, then may um, make extra contribution to axiom potential. Okay, so so this setup greatly um, reduces our task now um, in, in axiom quality issue. So in this way, we can understand the Patrick Quinn as a consequence of gauging U1 beam on a cell. Um, as a next step, um, but still, um, we have still, but, 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 but even if we, we, um, we reduces the, the infinite, reduces the, the, the number of the problematic operators from infinity to, to smaller infinity here, like there are still um, many, many operators, dangerous many, many operators. So we have to, so game is not over. We have to, we have to think about um, how we could further suppress these kind of remaining um, operators, which respect P minus L, et cetera, okay? Then now here comes the role 
here comes the story of the R symmetry. Um, we're thinking about the super symmetry model, okay? And then there's always R symmetry, okay? Of course, we're thinking about n equal one, um, the MSSM, okay? Extension of, M extension of the um, MSSM. In that case, there's always um, R symmetry. And then if this fundamental R symmetry is U on R, okay? And if you think about supergravity, we know that the R symmetry must be gauged, okay? And if, if this, this, this operator carries R charge greater than two somehow, then all those um, all the operators that you can see here will be suppressed, basically, because they do they do not respect the R symmetry. Therefore, this will um, this will give you the complete solution to the axiom quality problem. However, so so if this were to be the story, then I, I then, then that that would be great. Okay, we don't have any issue for the um, axiom. Okay, and and I can have a really a good. Um, UV completion of the, the um, KSVC or GFSC axiom model here. However, the problem is, but, but, but this is the case when I can gauge U on R, okay? But what's known a um, long time ago is practically it is very, very difficult, almost impossible to gauge U on R symmetry, okay? So it's not, it's not really possible to gauge U on R. Therefore, uh, we have to alternatively rely on the um, discrete R symmetry, okay? Um, but when you rely on, instead of U on R, when you rely on discrete Z and R, okay, where N is integer, positive integer, you, you, you notice that if you take, um, if, if you somehow, uh, if you can justify the choice of large enough N, okay, then, be, then basically, even if this is discrete symmetry, um, in, in resolving, in, in suppressing this, this kind of operators, it will basically behave very similar, very similar in, in a very similar way to the um, U on R, okay? So then um, that could be the good strategy. Um, in other words, um, if we can somehow justify our large N choice, okay? To suppress all this kind of operator here, then that would be a very nice, nice um, strategy to suppress all these operators solving the quality issue here, okay? Then now um, let me let me look at how we could gauge um, this discrete symmetry and how we could justify the large end choice here. Um, because we want to have this uh, this as a gauge symmetry, we need to look at the um, anomaly free condition um, in which Z and R is involved. Okay, but when that mixed anomaly condition of Z and R um, is very sensitive to the heavy particle spectrum. That, that, then, then that doesn't really give us very good, very useful information for constraining low energy physics because like that totally model dependent, UV physics model dependent. However, um, there's exception for this. The, the anomaly free condition for the mixed anomaly between the ZNR and SUN. So in some model, we have SU2, SU3 as a gauge symmetry, okay? The anomaly free condition for, for this mixed anomaly is insensitive to the heavy particle spectrum. This is a very important point. So in other words, the use of, use of this mixed anomaly can be very useful for cons constraining the charges of the low energy better here. okay? Um, so then, then let me look at particularly this, this mixed anomaly between the ZNR and the um, non gauge groups here. Non-abelian gauge groups that we have in the SNN model. And um, if you go through the anomaly question computation, um, you will find that that will be given by, and um, that will be first um, contributed contributed by the gauge genome here, in in supersymmetry models, and then um, the other one from the matters matter matter part here. Okay. And they and and this um, and the the um, anomaly free freeness of this mixed anomaly um, means uh, requires this anomaly question either that to be either that that should vanish, or that is given by the integer multiple of um, of this m here. So m is so when you think about sum, sorry, sorry. So so when you so when you think about the n here, z and r, it should so either this so this anomaly coefficient if that is the integer multiple of n here, okay, and then um, the the basically the you have a you can you have a satisfaction of the anomaly free condition. So there's a two option. Either this can be um, this can be zero or integer multiple of n here. So this is typo. This is this must be n here. Okay. If you choose this option, in other words, if anomaly quotient 
is the integer multiple of n here, okay? And then you need a very contrived setup for fermion. Why? Because, um, because we wanna, in the end, um, we wanna take the large n limit to suppress all those higher dimensional operators. For, for, for that, um, if you choose this anomaly coefficient, that means you have to either introduce many, many fermions having reasonable um, charge, or um, if you wanna introduce few fermions, and then those few fermions somehow need to have very large enough charges, okay? To make this quantity large enough. So therefore, the choice, this choice seems to be um, very um, the artificial from probability point of view. But if this anomaly question vanish, and then um, your, 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 your choice for the large n can be readily justified without contrived setup for the fermion. Once you, because um, suppose you have some, you, in, suppose in MSSM, you already have a non-vanishing contribution to this mixed anomaly here. But then um, by introducing few, few more fermions, okay, with a reasonable charge, you can readily make um, this total normal equation to zero. But then um, once this is set to be zero and then you can take a large end limit here without any problem. So this second option seems to be a much better option, especially uh, given our trial to suppress all those, all those operators um, in, in, in the large end limit. So then um, motivated by that observation, let me take um, the anomaly question for the ZNR with SU2 squared, ZNR with SU3 squared, zero, okay? That means they should be equal to each other. And um, if you go through the computation for this anomaly question within MSSM, you come to know that um, this equality between the anomaly question um, ANR3, ANR2, that requires the R charge assignment, uh, R, R charge of the H, HUHD should be four. Um, if you, again, and then if you put this equation into each of the anomaly question expression, and then you will find that the anomaly, each of the anomaly questions will be given by minus six mod n, meaning the anomaly question needs to be the integer multiple of n minus six, okay? And then let, let's, for, for simplicity, let, let me take the um, anomaly question to be minus six identically, okay? So now um, notice that we're talking about the story of axiom. Um, so we need some fermions um, carrying the color charge and also Petrkin charge to induce the um, to induce the um, the anomaly um, to to make the one Petrkin anomalous. Um, that means um, basically we can use now case visit fermions to make um, these two anomaly questions zero. Okay, so notice that in any case, in case visit picture, we need new fermions. Okay, coupled to Petrkin scalar. Okay, those guys, at least we know that they carry the SN3, SU3 color and the R, R, R charges, okay? And because we have identical um, anomaly questions, so what we're gonna do is not to introduce only the, the colored KSVZ, but also we're gonna just introduce, for example, SU5 multiplet, okay? Multiplet for the KSVZ variant to, to identically cancel this guy, okay? Um, we also know that the case of easy pyramid not only carry the um, this SUN charges, the isospin and color, but also R charge. It also carry the, um, of course, it, it should carry the Petrkin charge. But as I told you, in this 2U1 story, um, the because each of the scalars carry by each of the scalars carry the Petrkin charge, U1 B minus L charge. Um, the case of easy is coupled to those scalars, they should also carry the U1 B minus L charge. Okay. So case of this experiment, we're gonna carry all these charges here in, in, in this model, in this theory. And we know that the case of these experiments, um, so for, for their charge assignments, um, for their U1 charge assignment, they, they need to be chiral, okay? Um, to have the, um, to have U1 petroquine anomalous, okay? And then um, you will conclude in the end, um, you need at least a set of five new experiments as a case of these experiments, okay? That's because when you look at the anomaly free condition for U1 B minus L, which must be satisfied because U1 B minus L is gauge symmetry here, you come to know that the, the, the minimal number of chiral fermions to achieve the, um, the anomaly free condition is five. Therefore, 
um, in this story, you come to know that at least you need five fermions, five KSVC fermions, to make all the um, mixed anomaly condition vanish. Okay. And once you do that, um, you will see that all this um, Z, the discrete symmetry and then B minus L symmetry, they're all gauged successfully. Okay. For that reason, um, let me introduce five variants with this um, B minus L charges, minus, five, minus one, minus five, minus nine, seven, eight. This is one example of the um, charge assignment making the anomaly precondition for the U1 B minus L. Um, and let me impose Petrine charge to the five prime and um, the, the other, the, the fermions, um, psi bar seven and psi bar eight here, okay? Um, given this charge assignment, um, you will see that um, the super potential for scalar can be written in this way. And importantly, the, the Yukawa sector will be given by this, okay? So you have a, you have a two scalar five by prime and they will, carry the B minus L charge 10 and minus 15, okay? So given this B minus L charge of the fermions now, you can see how the Yukawa can be formed here, okay? So basically on the line idea is, okay, again, you, now, you get, now you just gauge U1 B minus L symmetry and the discrete symmetry, okay? And based on the, the charge assignment of U1 B minus L, you can just try to write down the um, Yukawa, Yukawa, um, Yukawa sector for the, um, the, the, the um, two scalar phi phi prime and the KSVZ variance. So this super potential respect to U1B minus L, okay. However, so far I didn't tell you what's the charge assignment under the discrete R symmetry here, okay. And then because now I have a gauged ZNR, um, this Yukawa coupling should also respect ZNR, okay. That gives me the information for the R charge assignment for the scalar phi and phi prime in terms of the R charge assignment of the fermions here, okay? But what does it tell you? Well, now what you do is you wanna, again, let me, let me remind you, you wanna have vanishing anomaly coefficient because once you, achieve, once you have this, once you achieve this, and then you can justify your large end choice, okay? Suppressing all those higher dimensional operators. Okay, but within MSSM, I told you this is minus six. So therefore you need to remove this minus six. That will be done by case visit variance. So therefore I require the R charge assignment of this, the, the sum of all the R charge assignment, R charge of the um, case of this variant to be um, plus six, okay? To cancel the, um, to cancel the contribution to anomaly questions from MSSM sector, okay? Once I impose this condition here, then um, the anomaly coefficient for the um, SU2, SU3 becomes zero, justifying my large end choice. Okay, then what does it tell you? Once I impose this condition to make the anomaly coefficient zero, then this information gives me the information for the R charge assignment of the scalar phi and phi prime, especially this operator here. Okay, so, so, so you have this equation, if you put this equation into here, and then this is, you, know, you have your three R phi, you have two R prime here. So, so when you enter this R charge assignment so experiment to here, you can, this automatically give you precisely this expression, the three R phi plus two R phi prime, and that is minus six. And, and notice that I told you, we have to only focus on this kind of operator now, because this is the, um, you want BMS cell. This is the only operators respecting you want BMS cell. So this setup automatically gives you the R charge assignment of this operator precisely, which is minus six. But super potential um, requires R charge, R, R charge two. Okay. Therefore, what that means is if you look at the leading contribution to super potential, then you see the phi cube, phi prime square is that leading operator. And in supergravity, um, that gives you this kind of scalar potential here, okay? So this guy carries an R charge minus six, but super potential requires R charge two. Therefore, um, you, need the, you, need a, you, need a, you need to multiply this operator by the gravity no mass to the fourth power, okay? Because gravity no mass carries R charge two. But then in, in supergravity potential, um, this will be multiplied by 
um, the Hermitian conjugate of the gravitational mass. Okay. So in the end, this operator carries R charge zero. And this operator in the setup is the leading, leading operator um, making dangerous contribution to axiom potential. Okay. Um, but then um, for this leading operator, you can try to, you can go through, go through the estimation for the, um, the axiom potential shift, so the, the, the shift that occurs for the um, potential minimum. And that is given by um, this gravitational mass, of course, and um, the, 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 the breaking scale for U1 pedicurine and the U1 B mass over there, which, identi which, which I, I identify with the V here, okay? And then you can see that um, even gravitational mass, like a thousand TeV, um, pedicurine breaking scale 10 to 12 GV, you can still um, show that the, um, this operator cont contribution to the um, contribution to the shifts occurring in the minimum of maximum potential is very small enough here, okay? Which is much smaller than 10 to the negative 10th neg power. So you can, in this way, you can see that the high scale Susie breaking and Petchkin breaking, that is readily consistent with the, um, with the, um, with the capability of QCD action to solve strong speed problem. Um, is this the end of the story? Well, um, you have to, you have to um, check also other operators because somehow um, if you, for example, if you choose n equal 12, and then there, there can be, there can, there can be, uh, there can be some hard, some operator with, um, with known unity n, um, which respect the z, z um, which respect to that discrete symmetry. Okay. Like, let's say if you choose n equal 12, and then some operator um, among these can, can readily respect z um, 12. Okay. And then you have this analysis to make sure that um, the shift is small enough. Okay. In that way, um, you go through some procedure to find out what would be the large enough n, okay, um, suppressing all those dangerous operators here, okay. However, this is readily justified, okay, because um, because um, we have the vanishing mixed anomaly question here, okay. And 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 I have to emphasize that the in normal discrete symmetry solution to the axiom poly problem, they they are missing this point, okay. So they don't have any reason to. Um, in other words, they cannot justify their large end choice, okay? But, but here um, in this story, the large end choice is readily theoretically justified. Therefore, um, you can choose that um, suppressing all those operators. I'm not saying this is the best model, but, but I'm just giving you a taste for how to address axiom quality problem um, based on some, some symmetries, okay? The symmetries you can find in low energy physics. And, and I'm not, in this picture, I'm not assuming any new symmetry. Okay, because, because that's very um, contrived, that's, that's very artificial from the model, model building point of view. I wanna have Axiom um, achieving the great harmony with other BSM landscape. So therefore I just rely on the already well-motivated existing symmetries, um, U1, B minus L and R symmetry, okay? Um, to show how you could um, suppress these dangerous operators even um, without introducing new symmetries here. For more detailed analysis, um, you, can, you can look at other this paper here. And um, is there any more question so far? If you don't, if you have a question, you can you can ask Potter at the at the end of the talk. Okay. If there's no at the moment, I will move on to the second perspective to the axiom quality problem. Okay. Um, so so that has been an example how we could how we could address the axiom quality issue in Petrkin picture, okay? And Petrkin picture, the problem is in Petrkin picture, the U1 Petrkin symmetry is a global symmetry um, and you have a complex scalar. So there's no way in principle to forbid all those higher dimensional operators. So that was the main source of the quality issue for QCD axiom. However, um, it turns out that you, you can have another different, very different formulation for QCD axiom without relying on the U1 Petrkin global symmetry, okay? And then, um, because, the, because you're not relying on global symmetry, maybe there's no more issue of the axiom quality, issue, axiom quality problem, okay? In this, in this alternative picture for QCD axiom. And, and, let me try, and let me discuss from now on um, how we could understand the QCD axiom quality problem in, in the alternative formulation of the QCD axiom. Okay, 
um, and and for to for and and to that end, um, let me now try to um, go through the um, so-called dual formulation of QCD axiom. Um, in QCD, the um, you have F, the famous Affine Affine tilde operator, okay? But this operator can be written always um, as the divergence of some current, okay? And this current, I call that current from now on the Chun Simon current. And this Chun Simon current. Um, has Hodge dual, um, which I write here, a C mu nu lambda, C mu lambda, C mu nu lambda here, okay? And, I, and from here on, I will call this um, three form, um, the Chun Simon three form of QCD. So this is, this is what is directly happening, um, but it's really true, uh, what is happening for the energy scale above lambda QCD. But below lambda QCD, then there must be counterpart of this Chun Simon three form, okay? For, for simplicity, let me call it C, um, C mu nu lambda again, okay? So this is a story below lambda QCD. Um, and let me, let me um, write the field, field strength of this the transcendent three form as H here, okay? And this H and DC, the field strength will be identified with the F mu F mu tilde. On the other hand, um, this F mu F mu tilde, um, um, when when we compute the expectation the expectation value of this operator in theta vacua, it turns out that this this um this famously um this is a proportional to you can show this sine theta where theta is a, a parameter um, parameterizing the theta vacua of QCD. So what that means is and and basically strong speed problem is 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 our trial to understand why you have such a why 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 how can how you can have such a tiny theta parameter. Um, in QCD vacuum, okay? And if you look at this relation, that means the vanishing theta is implying a vanishing expectation value of this operator, F mu F mu tilde, okay? Um, on the other hand, a long time ago, the Martin Lusher in CERN, um, he find um, he, he find the fact that for, for the case where, you, where your um, three form, Chun Sang three form is massless, okay? In that case, um, this two-point correlation function of this operator um, basically um, does not vanish. But if somehow, if you can make this Chun Simon three form, okay, whose field who, whose field strength is equal to that mu nu tilde, um, if you can make somehow that Chun Simon three form massive, okay, and then you can show that this two-point correlation function of this operator vanishes, okay, that was fine, that was observed by Duvalli. What does it mean? It means if you can justify your theory, um, if you can justify that your theory can have mass gauge invariant mass term for this chun Simon three form, meaning massive massive um, chun Simon three form. In that case, in that case, you can show that this is zero. Expectation value of the F mu F mu tilde is zero. And what it means is. Alternatively, the theta is zero. So therefore, it means massive three form, massive transcendent three form guarantees vanishing theta. So Gongjun here, um, mass of C should be less than lambda QCD. Is it right? Um, that's right, because we're describing the theory below lambda QCD. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Then um, at the colliders, we should have seen those um, massive Cs. Oh, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, for thanks for the question. So mm -hmm. that's true. If the C has a corresponding particle, okay. Mm -hmm. But here, this B C is a Chun Simon three form, and mm -hmm. and and in and in one plus three dimension, the three form um, does not have a propagating degrees of freedom. Okay. Uh -huh. So there is no corresponding particle. Oh, I see. It it, it carries a zero degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. So that's Chun Simon's. Okay. Yeah, but but I should emphasize there is really this Chun Simon three form in QCD. So naive expectation is below lambda QCD, the, 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 your QCD Lagrangian will be, um, your path interval for QCD has, you know, in its measure, it only has maybe hadronic fields. That's our normal understanding. But, 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 but we, have to, we have to know that there must be another, another field in measure, which is this transcendent free form, counterpart of transcendent free form in low energy QCD. But however, um, as, as pro Professor Pong, some, some, um, pointed out, um, this must be then discovered because this may, this may, um, this may have its own corresponding particle. 
But however, the important point is in four-dimensional theory, the transcendent three form does not does not does not have any any propagating Dirichlet free. Okay, so so there is no um, particle corresponding to this um, transcendent three form. Okay, it is there as a field only. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. Thanks thanks for your point. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so again, let me emphasize the vanishing theta requires massive C. That is mass term for C. Okay, that's what Diwali long time ago observed. observed. Okay, then what does it mean? It means the strong speed problem now that is translated to how to make Chun Simon 3 form massive. That's how we can handle the strong speed problem. The theta equals zero corresponds to Schick's phase of three form gauge theory. So therefore, what Diwali did is um, he translate the um, strong speed problem to the um, to to what phase of the three form gauge theory do we have in in QCD? Okay. Then okay. Then then we have to 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 have vanishing theta. We have to make transcendent three form vanish. So transcendent three form massive. Then we have to be able to introduce mass term for this guy. Okay. What does it mean? However, um, under SU three gauge transformation, this transcendent three form because that's given by the um, combination of the, the, the um, normal gauge field, okay? That's given by roughly the a, ADA and AAA, okay? So this, this transcendent three form transforms under SU3 color, okay? In this way, where omega is given by this expression here. The omega, the little omega is the parameter for the SU3 um, color gauge transformation, okay? And A is a gluonic field here. So C transforms this way. And, and knowing this um, gauge transformation rule for transcendent three form. And then um, we can think about introduction of the true form, okay, which transform under the SU3 color in this way. Okay, so if you introduce true form enjoying the gauged shift symmetry under SU3 color, then you can form the gauge invariant mass term for the three form. In other words, the two form will play a role from now on, will play a role of the Stickelberg field, okay? Whose gauge transformation will cancel that of the transcendent three form. In this way, you can have a gauge invariant mass term for the transcendent three form. Then you can have a mass term for mass term for three form, and therefore your theta parameter is zero, okay? Then now, at the moment you wanna ask, but we're talking about axiom, what are you talking about? How do we see the connection of this story to the to the QCD axiom? I think that's your question. Then the answer is, if you do, now, if you dualize this two form field, okay, then that gives to the axiom theory. Okay. To see how this works, um, knowing this gauge transformation rule for the two form and three form, let me try to write down the gauge invariant Lagrangian, okay, from low energy point of view, okay. First, you can write down, so, so you can write down the um, kinetic term for the three form, okay? H is field strength of the three form. And second, um, you can write down the gauge invariant mass term for this, the three form, okay? There you have a mixing between the two form and the three form. And this expression, okay, mixing the two form and three form, giving the um, gauge invariant mass term. Um, when, when you apply the derivative, exterior derivative here, you see that the D, you have a first DDV, which basically vanish. So that means if you remove, um, if you remove the MDC from, from G, okay, via this expression, and then um, you know that this expression should be zero. Okay. And so, so that this expression being zero means that can be, um, that can be something like a big Lagrange constraint. And you can embed that, that vanishing Lagrange constraint into the Lagrangian using the Lagrangian multiplier, okay? Which I write here as A. So here I just introduce, I just embed this um, vanishing expression into the Lagrangian using the Lagrangian multiplier, okay? But then this Lagrangian multiplier will be identified with the axiom like this. I am talking about how we could dualize two form theory, okay, to have the axiom theory. 
and then you construct a Lagrangian. And the key point is you can impose Bianca identity, okay, due to this, due to this identity, okay. And then in, in, in your doing so, in your imposing Bianca identity, um, you need a Lagrangian multiplier. Therefore, the QCD axion in this dual formulation will be realized as a Lagrangian multiplier, um, Lagrangian multiplier, um, in Lagrangian multiplier for this Bianca identity. So now if you, so this was Lagrange, this was a story for the two form and three form. Now you can go through the, so now you can integrate out two form here. Okay. And then integrate out two form gives the theory of um, Lagrange multiplier and the, the three form. Let, so sorry, this is, you, there's no E here. So this is like, this is a theory of the A and C three form. And then you have this, okay. And then um, you can go through the computation. So you can you can try to find figure out what is the equation of motion of this Lagrangian multiplier here. here. And then you will come to know that um, the Lagrangian multiplier's potential you can identify its potential derivative with the um, with the um, the field strength of the three form. Okay. So let me so notice that H is a field strength of the three form. And let me remove this. Let me. Using the using the epsilon tensor, let me try to contract all the Lorentz indices of three form, the field strength um, of the three form, um, okay, with the um, with that of the epsilon tensor, and then let me define um, this expression as x here, okay, and then what what you will figure out is the axion the Lagrangian multiplier potential derivative can be identified with the um, x here. Okay. So what does it mean? Okay, now. What you did is to exchange the, the two form with this Lagrangian multiplier, okay? I told you the um, chun simon three form does not have any propagating degrees of freedom, but two form is different. Two form, you, will, you, will, you, will, um, you can count degrees of freedom of two form, and then you will figure out that two form carries one degrees of freedom, okay? And this is a theory of two form, three form. If you integrate out two form, and then there arises theory of the Lagrangian multiplier, and three form, okay? And Lagrangian multiplier carries one degrees of freedom. So there is indeed matching of the degrees of freedom between these two theories, okay? After you, you integrate out two form, you will get the theory of the um, Lagrangian multiplier, um, which is nothing but the theory of the axiom, okay? And then you see that the axiom potential can be written in terms of precisely the, um, the chun simon three forms field strength. Okay, this is very, very interesting observation. This simple equation is very, very interesting observation made by Jabari. Um, now, what does it mean? We know that the, the, um, this is a pseudoscalar, so it will go through its, its cosmological um, dynamics, okay? And then it, it will eventually dynamically driven to the um, minimum of potential, okay? So now let's say it, it is sitting in its um, minimum of potential. What does it mean? When that happens, okay, the um, derivative becomes zero, okay? Um, so that, and, and this being zero means X vanish. What does it mean? This X, the field strength of three form, constant of three form, that was, that was, that was nothing but the um, F mini F mini order. Okay, so theta prime. So therefore here, you can see that the um, global minimum um, gives you vanishing X, therefore vanishing theta. So this is how the QCD axiom is understood in dual formulation. So therefore, the endure formulation, there's no global symmetry. The axion is a perfect solution to strong speed problem. And notice that there's no any, um, any complex scalar in global symmetry, okay? However, it, alternatively, what you have here is, the, um, the assumption is, this two-form axion enjoys the gauge shift symmetry under SU3 power, okay? That's, that's what changed um, in this picture as compared to the Petrkin picture. So this is very different perspective to the Petrkin picture, okay? But it's very, very interesting because the two different picture relying on different, different symmetries give you in the end the same physics. So this is very, very interesting. Um, so far, do you have any question? So I'm almost reaching the end of the talk. So if you have, you can ask further. Um, you can ask further question at the end of the talk. I'm almost, I'm almost there. Um, but then you may ask, well, uh, but then is axiom perfect solution to a strong problem? There's no inequality issue in this dual formulation. On the other hand, if I talk to the string theories, 
And notice that this, this C just turns them three form. This doesn't arise from the UV theory like string theory. I told you this C, the three form, is there because like it is there um, in the energy scale below lambda QC. So this is kind of field that is emergent from low energy point of view, not from UV point of view. Okay. However, if I talk to string theories, they tell me there are a lot of three forms. Especially if you look at the string vacuum, there are a lot of three forms, okay, in doing their gauge symmetry. But then very um very um worried situation would be what if X ionic two form enjoys not only um not only QCD shift symmetry, but also other um, shift symmetry of the um, gauge symmetry, which is enjoyed by other three form. Okay. Then we can think about the situation where the two form axionic symmetry not only coupled to two city chun Simon three form, but also it coupled to other three form, let's say E. Okay. Then you can go through the same construction for the engaging bearing Lagrangian for, for axionic two form and um, QCD chun Simon three form and some, some three form arising from UV theory or string theory or some hidden neuron gauge theory. Hidden neuron gauge theory may also have the um, its own its own chun Simon three form. Okay, whatever you have, let's say you have simply um, the another three form extra three form E here. And if axion enjoys also gauge symmetry, okay, enjoyed by this three form, and then you can construct this Lagrangian. And then the, the, the observation here is now if you go to if you go through the same dualizing procedure, you will see that axion potential now not only receives contribution from the QCD chun Simon three form, but also other three form. What does it mean? It means the potential minimum does not correspond to vanishing X, does not correspond to vanishing theta, because this is equal to zero means that doesn't mean X is zero, and which doesn't mean, again, theta is not zero. Okay, so there is a quality issue in X and X and Axion, axion's dual formulation, okay? And the QCD axion quality in your, in your description, now it, it turns out that that only concerns if our two form axion coupled to extra three form, okay? So well, even if- Hong Jun, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, so yes, what, yes. Uh, you are talking about the effective theory below lambda QCD. Why don't you assume- the extra E field is just heavy field, and you don't see uh, that degrees of freedom in low energy. Oh, however, that, that that's right. However, the I I, I can also um, move to the the, the um, energy scale higher than lambda QC. Mm -hmm. There now I have a chun Simon three form, not counterpart of the chun Simon three form. So then then there the C becomes the the original chun Simon three form. So you regard this uh, Lagrangian for the UV completion of your um, setup. It's a so as I as I as I write here, it's a part of a Lagrangian. Okay, yeah, it's part of a Lagrangian. Yeah, um, but what I'm what I, what I'm telling you here is like, mm -hmm. I I don't need to do this, but I am asking the question. Mm -hmm. Like so far, this dual formulation looks perfect in a sense that the, mm -hmm. in a sense that um, in a sense that the, oh, sorry, <laughs> somebody came in. Um, dual formulation seems to be perfect in a sense that. Like um like you know like global minimum of axion, um potential really correspond to theta equals zero precisely. Mm -hmm. There's not even not even any further further very tiny contribution to theta parameter. It's mm -hmm. precisely zero here in this formulation. Mm -hmm. So the QCD axion in, in this formulation looks perfect, perfect, pre precisely zero. Okay. Yeah. To in my eyes, case, uh, uh, you can control uh, this conclusion by changing the mass of the the other particle, large ma. Large ma. Oh, here mm. the large MA is the mm. axion mass generated by the another three form. So, so right. little MA is the, the, the mass of axion yeah, by, generated yeah, by the... um, um, well, integrating out the other field, and you assume MA is um, MA large MA doesn't play any role in, in low energy theory, and then your conclusion is just perfect, right? Or or yeah. no, but but no, but but, but I'm, I am I am looking at the energy scale of like let's say now M A capital M A, mm -hmm. but but I can still have have this potential form here. Mm -hmm. Now, the, but but the important point is here. 
when I say that, then that X is not the field strength of the counterpart of transcendent three form, but it's mm -hmm. the field strength of the real, real just um the turn, the, the QCD transcendent three form. It's not, it, but 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 not its counterpart. So if I if I go to the scale below lambda QCD, and then this is field strength of the counterpart of transcendent three form. Mm -hmm. in, in like what what I want to say is whatever energy scale you look at, there's always three form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just asking. Um, wondering about the role of the the, the other field. The role um, of the other field. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, if you yeah. just yeah. assume, yeah, the other field doesn't play any role in your game, then this doesn't change any a conclusion you made. So it doesn't doesn't change any conclusion I I have here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, I think um, I think um. First, I can go to the energy scale above lambda QCD, mm -hmm. but then there um, I still have transcendent three form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so additional that, transcendent. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So I my Lagrange whole of Lagrangian will still contain as a part of that right. this form this 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 operators here. Yeah, and then that will generate the excellent potential in this form. Mm -hmm. And but but then I I can go to I can move to the higher energy scale as as high as the um, scale associated with the three form, mm -hmm. the extra three form. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there, I am, I, I am, so, so I am writing down this expression at, at that energy scale, as high as the, um, right, as high as the hidden hidden scale associated with the extra three form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, 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 because of this relation, um, yeah, the the the, the potential minimum does not correspond to vanishing vanishing x field strength, therefore. Doesn't tell tell us um, vanishing theta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can can you? So can I say that? Um, okay. Let Let's assume large M A is near to the Planck scale. Planck scale, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but still, uh, this guy play a uh, change the the minimum of the potential. So uh -huh. your 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 conclusion is not. Um, Protected by this Planck scale physics. That's right. That's right. So this 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 shift that that happens in axion potential that will remain there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that is how we understand the axion quality problem in this okay. future. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there is indeed the quality issue in your future. Yeah. yeah and, and actually, what if you look at the original paper um, written in 20, like 20, 2005 by Diwali. Mm -hmm. um, which, which was not published, but, but many mm -hmm. people look at the paper. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think he was not in technical publishing, but if you look at the original paper, okay. then he he cares about the, um, I, now I just generalized this reform into other other three forms like Hummel string theory or hidden non gate theory, but he he was very much worried about the um, the three form from gravity sector. Okay. Okay. And, and in gravity, according to the, you have an unavoidable three form, which is Christopher symbol. Christopher symbol okay. play a role of this extra three form. So he okay. cares about action coupling to that because that's unavoidable. Yeah. I see. So everything yeah. couples we have. Yeah. So that is so that is how we understand, yeah. Quality issue in its picture. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. So this is how we understand the quality issue here. Okay. And then alternatively, if you look at the equation of motion of now three forms here, yeah, okay. And then you will see that the field strength of um, C and E will be given by this, okay, in terms of axion field and the associated energy scales, okay, here. But then here, um, you can see that if potential does not receive contribution from extra three form, then you can see that the global minimum, the, the potential minimum is precisely theta F, where F is axion decay constant, okay. However, if there is another contribution to axion potential, the the Due, due to the extra three form, okay, and then the potential minimum gets spoiled by this by the by this by the amount of this expression here, okay, and by comparing these two different minimum, okay, of different situations, um, depending on the presence of depending on whether you have the extra three form or not, um, you can you can estimate the um, shift that happens to the axiom the shift of potential minimum um, happening to the axiom potential, and then that is given by this, okay. Of course, um, when we discuss the action quality issue, we're, um, of course, um, we're more interested in the case where the um, axion, gener axion mass generated by the hidden extra three form is much heavier than the QCD axion original mass, okay? In that case, 
very interesting thing is this this shift is given by the um you know the the shift is given by the um the cancellation between between the theta angle of two two gauge theory okay and normally this is a, this is you know if theta is an angle so normally this is order one so then the question is why such a order one quantities why do they need to conspire each other to cancel like conspire each other to 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 cancel each other to give rise to to produce a much much smaller um, number okay than them okay so that's how we understand um, the quality issue here okay then um, what's the solution okay so 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 far um, and then let me emphasize it turns out that this is the only way to spoil the um, axiom quality in this dual formulation. As I told you in Patrick's picture, there can be many, many ways to spoil the um, axiom quality. Okay, you have some modification to QCD beta function, or or not only higher dimensional operator, there can be other several physics. Okay, but in this picture of dual formulation, there's the there's only there's a, only single source. Okay, causing problem to the axiom quality. Okay. That is, if x is coupled to other extra three form, okay, then the solution should be also unique, because the problem is unique. The solution must be unique. Then what is the solution? Well, if you can somehow switch off this extra three form contribution to axiom potential, then then that is a solution. Okay. Then how we could do that? Um, that can be done by guaranteeing the um, guaranteeing that your theory has. Um, has matching between the number of two forms and number of three forms, okay? Now, in here, um, I have one two form, axion, but I have a two three forms, okay? So there's a mismatch. The number of two forms is smaller than the number of three form. But now, if you achieve this equality, if you, this, this matching of the number of forms here, by introducing one more two form, okay? Then um, argument is there's no quality issue. Um, to see how that works, let's try to think about introduction of new two form B tiller, okay, which coupled to the extra three form in this way, okay. And then you go through the um, Bianchi identity, you go through the, um, the the dualizing procedure. In the end, you will find um, dualization will give you the relation between axiom potential and this new Lagrangian multiplier. Let's say the B axiom. Um, this dualization will give you the axiom potential and B axiom potential in terms of the, um, the field strength of the three forms in this way. Then you can quickly see that the dynamically, if B is heavier than the QCD axiom, it will driven to the global minimum. This is zero. So Y turns up there. And then this, this is equal to the MAX here. Okay. But this is not true because this is an interaction eigenbasis. So we have to move to mass eigenbasis. Okay. Um, you can either go to the mass eigenbasis for axion, or you can move. You can either you can also go to the um, mass eigen the the uh, the eigenbasis of the um, the three forms here. Okay, and then you can redefine the three form. Okay, this as a new three form x bar, and and and, and this as a new three form y bar. In this way, um, you can you can restore the correspondence one to one correspondence between the vanishing four form electric field zero x here and the potential minimum. Okay, so there's no quality issue. Okay. And this can be readily generalized to multiple three form cases. But when you when you have more and more three forms coupled to the two form axiom, um, as far as now you 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 guarantee um, the matching of the number of forms here, okay? Um, you you can always show that the um, potential of the axion can be written as um, some dimensional quantity times um, x here, okay? And that's sim and, and so so what happens when you achieve this is big. What, what, what happens when you achieve this equality is every other three form can be written in terms of the transcendent, QC transcendent three form, that's it. And then um, you, you will see that this whole of the expression can be simply rewritten in terms of um, some dimensional quantity and the, um, the transcendent three form, the field strength of that. And then you, re and then you restore this one-to-one -one correspondence between axiom potential and the um, trans QC transcendent three form. And then you can guarantee the vanishing theta precisely. Okay, so this is a solution. As far as you guarantee number of two forms and number of three forms, um, your axiom is perfect solution to a problem. What does it mean phenomenologically? 
Now, whenever you introduce more and more two forms, okay, to achieve this matching of number of forms, that means there must be corresponding Lagrangian multipliers. What does it mean? This means um, this may imply the multiple axiom scenario is required um, for enhancing the quality of QCD axiom. So many, so like like since since ten years ago, some people um, by relying on string theory, they they say, oh maybe we have X inverse, meaning the, the universe is full of the um, plenitude of multiple light axiom scenario. Okay. However, what this picture is very interesting is from low energy point of view. Oh, uh, maybe okay. So so I, I told you this free form can arise from string theory. But however, okay, even even without knowing details of string theory, yeah, how competitification happened there. Even without knowing that, okay, from the quality of the QCD axiom, okay, from this discussion, we can motivate, we can think about possibility of multiple axiom scenario. Okay, so um, um, this is all what I want to talk about today. Um, and, I have a, um, one more question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, how, how, how do you suppress the mixings between uh, among um, different two forms and different three forms? When you're well, I, the mixings, then I guess you have problems. When I, so, sorry, can you say that again? When I, uh -huh. I have, yeah, for so example, you have multiple two forms and multiple uh -huh. three forms. Yes, and yes. Then, and yeah, just like this. Yeah. Then you start to allow the mixings among uh -huh. different two forms and two, different three forms. Yes, then yes. You do have this kind of um, additional contributions, right? That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And and your question is how do I suppress suppress the mixings suppress mixings mixing right. so mixing mixings I I cannot touch the mixing mixing is basically the property of the gauge theory of extra three forms okay and these large large capital M A I don't have a controllability for that because that is just given by the hidden scale and and which I I I don't know what it is it can be Planck scale very dangerous. However, what I'm telling you is without suppressing, so okay, if you suppress this, okay, so this becomes small enough. So maybe you can think of, oh, if, if I find a way to suppress this parameter here, and then maybe I can I can achieve the small enough, small enough shift in the potential minimum. However, I am trying to think about very aggressively, very um, dangerous case where I don't have controllability for, for this one. So this one can be in principle as large as Planck scale. But then my question is, can we, Without suppressing this parameter, okay, which is readily possible, can we? Sorry, oh, oh, can we? Can we restore this relation, one-to-one -one relation, one-to-one correspondence? And that can be done by the um, by requiring this matching of the number of forms. Yeah. So, so could you? Yeah. The next page. Next page. Next page. Next page. Yeah. Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, pre previous week. Yeah. Here? Uh, yeah, right. So here, by introducing the second two form B tilde, you uh -huh. now have a G tilde, which is DB tilde plus MBE. That's right. This here is the you have B and E. B and E, yeah. Right. And you have an, another set of uh, two forms and three form. I So I have, first, I have a I have original two form for X right. and QCD and, and I have a ton sum in QCD three form. That's C. right. So by and, by yeah. having those two terms, you oh. you said um, you are okay. And then you now yeah. have another set of two form and three form. And, and then and then now, yeah. so now, so still having only single two single axionic two form D. Mm -hmm. If I have a, if I have two three forms C and mm -hmm. E, mm -hmm. so I have a one more three form than two form. Right. Then you have a problem. Then, then I have a problem. Then I have a problem. Right. Then I have a problem. Then I have a problem. Right. However, if I introduce one more two form here, okay, coupled to E and C, maybe okay, that's part. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Then I have a two two form. I have a two three form. That's right. And what I'm saying is, as as far as you guarantee this number of two form three form, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is like, yeah, one can go through the computation detail, and then you can you will find it's always possible that the axiom potential derivative is only contributed by the um turn Simon three form. By one of them. Turn, the the QCD turn Simon three form. Yeah. So therefore, 
you mm -hmm. you, you restore the one-to-one -one correspondence between mm -hmm. the axiom potential and mm -hmm. and QCD turn Simon field string. Then then you can guarantee vanishing theta. Yeah, is it true that you allow um, all possible combinations of two forms and three forms, and you yeah. still get the same conclusion? That, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's true. Oh, okay, I can say that. I can say that. Yeah. Okay. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, this motivates the um, multiple excellent scenario from from different from 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 the very phenomen phenomenologically important issue: quality of the QCD axiom. It doesn't rely on this string theory. Okay. So maybe axiverse is there because of the quality of the QCD axiom. But this conclusion, okay, this kind of observation can never be made in Petrican picture. It's an absolutely different perspective, okay? And conclusion is very different. Phenomenological implication is very different. So yeah, I myself still remain very confused <laughs> because of I am because like when like if you look at the Diwali paper, he called this theory duality, okay? Dual theory. But dual dual theory means uh there must be one-to-one -one correspondence between the concepts appearing in these two parallel pictures, okay? However, like somehow this gives rise to different conclusions. So this is my um, somehow confusing here, but okay, I I just give you in this talk um, the two different perspectives to to see the axiom, okay? So let me let me move to the conclusion. Let me conclude this talk. Again, the axiom quality problem when when you hear this word, it's very simple. You know, like it's very trivial point. You know. It's about where is your global minimum of your potential? Is it zero? Or if, if it is, if it's not zero, then how small it is? That's a quality problem. It's really, there's nothing you know, sacred. There's nothing deep, but that's a quality problem. And then there can be, I think, um, several different perspectives towards quality problem, okay? Um, and also like, of course, uh, Professor Song Shang Pang, as he is working on the normal physics, yeah, some someone is addressing also the this issue based on the Wormhole physics study. So, it, like, there are many different perspectives to towards the axiom quality problem. I give you the, on the other hand, I give you due to time time limitation, I give you the two examples, um, in in which we can have a different understanding for quality issue. I first give you how this can be understood in Petrkin picture, okay, global symmetry, scalar, complex scalar. And um, in doing so, I, I, I give you some, a possible UB completion case in high quality axiom. Um, but I give you more, more interesting, I give you another alternative um, framework based on the formulation of QCD axiom, okay? There, um, basically there's no global symmetry, but there arises the, um, the, the gauged axionic shift symmetry, okay? An important point there is the quality issue um, it only has a very unique source, okay? Therefore, this uniqueness of the, of the problem is inherited by the solution also. So there's also the unique solution, multiple axioms. Um, by saying unique solution, I should emphasize the number of matching of the two forms and three forms. This is, this is what I mean by here, the unique solution. I'm not saying multiple axioms is a unique solution. If you look at the Duvalis paper, he he considered the other possible, like based on this unique solution, number of matching of two forms and three forms, he applied this solution to talk about, to apply this to the neutrino phenomenology, okay? So you can have very different phenomenology, okay? But, there, but there's a unique theory, I can't tell you. There's a unique um, theoretical solution. Okay, so, um, okay, so then, then um, let me conclude this talk by um, giving you just two outlets like, um, what would be so? So I have been talking about the KSUEZ axiom scenario, but um, can we talk about the, the same story in the DFSC model? Okay. So can you address can you address the axiom quality problem based on the existing well-known symmetries? Okay, motivated by other BSM issues, um, and can we talk about DF UV compilation of the high-quality DFSC axiom? That can be a question. Um, Another question I want to ask you is like, what would be the phenomenological implication of this high quality axiom in your, your picture? What is what is a, what, what interesting phenomenology can we have? Okay, this is basically the ongoing work um, by me and the, my uh, collaborator, the Jacob Lidham in Desi, and we're almost finishing the paper. Um, we're going to put the paper may probably next week. Okay, so you can see the implication there. Okay, okay, thank you so much for um, for your attention, and if you have other questions, please let me know. Uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. Any question?
Yeah, actually, I wanted to ask the, the last point. Was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, if you come to the the workshop that will be um, that will be held um, next week, then then I will talk about. Oh, okay, this. I see. So okay, I can wait. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, we can we can discuss that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Um, Any other question? I think um, Professor Ko um, raised the hands. I think oh. so. No, I, no, I, I mean, I mean. No, no, I don't know. No, I didn't. I just. <laughs> you didn't. Uh, actually, I, I have some uh, questions. So what corresponds to, to adding new three form gauge field in your, I mean, your picture, what correspond it to the Patrick Kim picture? Very good. Um, if, so that depends on the nature of the three form, extra three form. Mm -hmm. But as I told you, and this three form can be um, can arise in high energy theory due to many reasons. But if you want to know the concept, the corresponding concept in Patrick Kim picture to this extra three form in dual formulation, then my answer would be um, if you think about, for example, the, the hidden noir bailing gauge theory, hidden SUN, for example, okay, hidden SUN, like I impose the um, discrete discrete ZNR symmetry. That means it turns out that um, you're going to have the, um, so, so sorry, the, if you have a SUN hidden gauge theory, and then the that give rise to the breaking of the U1R to the um, discrete Z2NR, okay? So if you have such a SUN hidden, hidden non abelian gauge theory, and then there must be corresponding the um, the Chun Simon three form of the of the hidden non abelian gauge theory, okay? Then that can be one. Um, one three form, extra three form, then they couple to the QCD axiom. And, and in Patrick and picture, um, in other words, this is realized by having axion coupling to other G prime mu nu, G prime, a uh, G tilde prime mu nu. Okay. Nowadays, in axion phenomenology, if you look at if you look at papers of axion um, phenomenology, some people try to try to um, due to there some cosmological issue, they try to couple axion to hidden u1 or they want to couple axion to the hidden neurobelian gauge theory okay then then this situation is precisely that situation if you couple the axion to the axion to hidden neurobelian gauge theory then the axion coupling to the um the um chun simon three form of that hidden neurobelian gauge theory um happens occurs okay so so yeah so in that sense um you can understand how the extra three form can be mapped to the um, patch room picture. So, That's why I answer your question. In that case, it is also the same. If we uh, introduce new uh, multiple axion, then can can uh, relax the axion quality pro problem. Not not relax. It just removes the quality. I problem. remove. Okay. Yeah. I so so I, I I don't want to use the high quality here. It's a, just perfect solution. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Petchkin picture here, the high quality, this has a meaning because like how small theta parameter you have. Okay. But in, in your formulation, there's no quality issue. Like it's just, just perfect as far as you have multiple axioms, the perfect solution to strong speed problem. But then the interesting one, one interesting implication would be, we know that in, from the electroweak sector, um, we know that the, there's another contribution to the theta parameter, 10 to the negative, um, negative as small as 10 to the negative 18 power, I think, okay. And if axion is a perfect solution to a strong speed problem, and then at least the theta parameter should be as large as 10 to the negative, negative 18 power. So I'm not sure for this number, but, but it's much smaller number than the 10 to the negative 10 power, okay. Which is, which is always there due to the electroweak factor contribution to theta parameter. Then this will be the leading, leading, leading value, leading contribution to theta parameter, okay. Okay, I have one more question. Sure, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Much, yeah. much more silly question. So I uh, I felt kind of similarity between your uh, theory. I mean, you want Petchkin and you want B minus L to the to some uh, non invertible symmetry uh, uh, discussions. Do you have and do you know any relation between the, the 
non-invertible symmetry and this uh, U1 patch king and U1 B minus L and also it might be some solution <laughs> for axiom quality problem. So sorry, the, the, so you're you're asking, so, sorry, um, I should say that the, honestly, I am, it's beyond the scope of my capability. Okay? So I, because I have no idea, this is, I, I know it's one of the hot topic, the, the non invertible what is non invertible global symmetry? But I don't know what I I even don't know what the name is precisely. But I know that's one of the hot topic. But I, I I don't know how how I could um what comment I could make. Okay, I see, I see. in that like in connection to that. But one comment or one comment is the um if you think about generalized global symmetry, okay, T form T form global symmetry, then mm -hmm. um in 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 dual in dual in, in dual formulation, okay. This axiom can be understood as the gauge field of the uh, minus one form generalized global symmetry. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have a minus one form global generalized global symmetry, you need to gauge it. I don't, like, otherwise, it's not consistent with the quantum gravity and philosophy. And you, like, they don't. They, they hate global symmetry. So you need to either gauge the generalized p form global symmetry, or you need to break it. But then the, you can think of a minus one form generalized global symmetry. Okay. And then the axiom. Um, arises there as a as a gauge symmetry gauging the minus one form global symmetry. So that can be a comment mm -hmm. to the um, to this kind of generalized global symmetry. Okay. I see. I see. Any other question? Uh, if not, let's thanks Kirogen. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Thanks so much for the, yeah. Uh, thank I, you very much. Thank you so much.